Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habati fillah A question was asked I live in the Caribbean island of Trinidad where the Salafi Dao was almost non-existent A few years ago there were a couple of students of knowledge who tried to push the Dawah but one of them fell victim to his via which caused the split Recently, I've been trying to educate the local Muslims about basic matters of fiqh, as explained by the ulama. Many of the Muslims of my country take people from the Dar al-Ulum, Brailui sect, and local graduates of Medina University to be ulama. One of the graduates went against the advice of the ulama when he chose to use the global sighting for Eid, while the main body of Muslims had been using the local sighting for decades. This caused Muslims within the country to have two days of Eid. I'm familiar with ulama such as Sheikhs Fozan, Suhaimi, Rahayli, and others who are alive. <clears throat> I would appreciate it if you could list a few points that a person can use to recognize a true scholar of Islam. Also, could you provide a link that lists some of the current major ulama of Saudi Arabia and the other Muslim lands? I am aware that there are no ulama in the West. Jazakallah khairan. First and foremost, uh, <clears throat> it's very important. I've never been to the Caribbean, so I don't know the, the status. But I am well aware that there are Salafi communities or have been uh, throughout the Caribbean. And Trinidad is well known for uh, Du'at, and I've known uh, personally students of knowledge at, uh, from the past in Damaj and other parts of Yemen and also there I've met some students of knowledge that were either from Trinidad or originally from Trinidad and perhaps I don't know if they returned or not so it's well known that there is uh, the Dawah is there in uh, the Trinidad so never be in a hurry to write off the Jehud or the uh, the efforts of Ahlul Sunnah in the various places and localities because uh, this can be very damaging and this has been a damaging uh, trial and fitna for the Dawah when we have individuals who say there's no Dawah in such and such place we had certain s scholars in the past and I say scholars because they fell into bid'ah even though they had some knowledge who wrote off the whole subcontinent of India said when asked about India ah there's no Salafis said this about India as big as India is and as well known <laughs> as uh, it is for having uh, places like Dar Hadith or, and Ahla Hadith in places like India and Pakistan is well known and we have uh, many scholars who have uh, who can witness to that and many students of knowledge and so on and so forth so it's very important to be cautious about quickly writing off whole continents or uh, countries or localities the second point I want to mention uh, with regards to the crux of your question uh, in that you're familiar with certain scholars you mentioned Imam Fozan and uh, Imam Suhaimi and Sheikh Rahali. I don't know if you mean Sheikh Ibrahim Rahali or Sheikh Suleiman Rahali. Probably Sheikh Suleiman Rahali, but both of them are are Mashaykh of Ahlul Sunnah and others. Uh, there are countless uh, ulama, and you can find that on Salafi websites as well. That will tell you about many of the scholars that are in Medina. For example, the ones you named like. Uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Rahili, Sheikh Suleiman Rahili, there is Sheikh, uh, of course, Sheikh Abayd Jabri, Sheikh uh, and Sheikh Sali Suhaimi, Sheikh. Uh, there, there's just really too many to name. Imam Abdul Rasul Al Abad, which should be at the top of the list there, and Sheikh, uh, uh, you know, Imam uh, Ali Nasser Al Faqi, and you have Sheikh Ali Tawadri, you have Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab Al Aqil, you have Sheikh Muhammad Bin Hadi. Al-Medkhali, you have, uh, and of course, uh, Imam 
uh, Sheikh Rabi is there in Medina as well now. Uh, you, you have too many uh, scholars there, just in Medina alone. So when we talk about Saudi Arabia, you've just got a plethora, walillah alhamd, of scholars uh, from Ahl Sunnah. And, and it's listed on the websites. You can go to the websites and, and find that information. Uh, as far as criterion, even you'll find criterion from ulama in translated statements of the Salaf. But one of the most important things that I would say with regards to knowing who the scholars are or when someone is a scholar is, uh, and especially to know when they're a major scholar, is if they are of the Rabbaniyun. Uh, and I believe it's in the tafsir of Ibn Abbas when he referred to the Rabbaniyun uh, and the Rasikhun of Al-Ilm, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran as well, Rasikhun of Al-Ilmi uh, in Surah uh, Ali Imran. Uh, that they are those who, uh, the, the, the Rabbaniyun, that they raise the people and raise the people, you know, mean, educating the people starting with the Oluyat, the, the minor issues to the major issues. That's one side of the, one sign of a scholar. And to drive this home, because it just made me really reflect, when you look at a lot of the major scholars uh, from our ulama of the past, and even in contemporary times, if you look at, like, uh, for example, those living, let's look at some examples like Sheikh Salaam Fuzan, as we said, Imam Fuzan. If you look at how he, he teaches in many of our ulama, especially those major ones, that they, they teach that even the general Muslims will benefit from this. They don't just teach to the students of knowledge. And that's okay if you teach to only students of knowledge. Uh, that's that's okay as well. But the uh, a sign of the Rabbaniyun is anyhow that they begin the people on the basic, the basics. So you'll see Imam Fozani, you'll see many of our ulama still teaching basic books on, you know, the adab of the shurut salat uh, and, you know, basic uh, issues regarding even the Arkan al-Islam and books, teaching books like Arba'in and Nawawi and, and explaining these books and then explaining basic books in Aqidah like Usul al-Thalatha and many things like this. So you see that they raise the people and then they take the people to the next level and the next level. They don't start the people with talking about the Shuruta Takfir and the Dawab to Takfir, you know, major complex issues, how to make Tabdi of people, how to, uh, you know, the science of Jarwa Ta'adil. They don't begin the people with that. That's a higher level of knowledge and that would be knowledge more reserved for students of knowledge and people who are engaged in those affairs, but the general people don't really need to know much about the uh, those sciences. They don't need to know about those sciences, and correct me if I'm wrong, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So the point being is the Rabbaniyun, those major scholars, especially if you want to know the major scholars, you'll see that this is their sloop. You'll see that they are teaching the people. They're raising the people. This is a, a, a Rabbani, you know, they, and, and, and the word tarbiya comes from this term. Uh, tarbiya meaning you know e uh, education you know tarabba you know to 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 raise up to raise and to educate and so this uh, a true scholar in general even aside from the rabbaniyun a true scholar is one who is educating you who's helping you to raise your status and i'm really going to just stick to that point so what you can look as a criterion, not just with regards to scholars, but even students of knowledge or du'at, people who you take, that are da'is uh, that you take from. Are they raising you up or are they causing you more confusion? That's a criterion. So even if they claim to be from Ahl Sunnah, but all you get from this fitna, all you get is more confusion. Every time you, you read a post that they post, it's about uh, making takfir of someone or it's about making tibdi of someone. And it's causing you more confusion. You know, you, you, they're talking about differences between the ulama, and that's all they do, and they exploit you, but they don't teach you, they don't educate you. Then that's a sign uh, of their nuks, of their, uh, their shortcomings in delivering knowledge. And that you have to question yourself and see is it worth listening to that? Is that having the effect of bringing you closer to Allah or not? So that's one of the most important things that I can say 
aside from many criteria that the ulama mentioned with regards to this matter. As far as the last statement that you mentioned about there are no scholars in the West and that the people hold those people as scholars, it isn't for, and I don't think that it's been a case in history where the people had to look to Saudi Arabia or some particular country only for ulama. And what I mean by that is that, for one, our da'wah is not restricted to Saudi Arabia. Okay, For some of us who studied in Saudi Arabia and studied in Yemen and places like this, we, of course, tend to go back to those places because that's where our ulama are from. And likewise, those are uh, in Saudi Arabia and Yemen. You have many ulama of Ahl Sunnah that are well known from those, those places that have a high level of knowledge and have a known... Uh, history of propagating the Sunnah and you have a lot of them whereas in some other countries you might talk about Mauritania where it's very strong in memorization very strong in knowledge but there may not be as many scholars of Ahl Sunnah there may be a lot of Sufi Sufism which is well known and a lot of uh, Ashari the, the spread of the Ashari uh, Aqidah which is well known from some of those places but that doesn't negate that they don't have a lot of knowledge and it doesn't negate that there's some scholars from Ahl Sunnah that are major uh, that are from those places so that's one point another point as far as the West is that uh, with regards to scholarship that it depends upon the level of knowledge for one and the level of knowledge of the people of the society so when you say there are no scholars in the West I don't think that's a correct statement to say in that we might not say there are no major scholars in the West, there are no this, but to say that to negate all the scholarship, there are so many, uh, for example, I can just say, I, you know, in America, for example, you know, there are many uh, communities that you may not even know of or may, may be known that have people who are very strong who are more than just students of knowledge, that have a lot of knowledge and in accordance with the standards of their society, you would consider them a, a sheikh. Because the people go back to them for fatwa, they go back to them for knowledge, and, and all of the things. So you don't say, oh, he's not a sheikh because he's not from Saudi Arabia. Oh, he's not a sheikh because he doesn't have a tzizkiyah from, from Yemen. No, we can't say that. But rather, you would say in accordance with the standards of that society, they are in a position, they are a sheikh. They are a sheikh. doesn't mean we say that they're the major scholars or this and that and the other. And we have to know Ahl Sunnah Tafawit, as I've said this, and Ahl Bid'ah Tafawit. Meaning the people of the Sunnah, they have different levels. And likewise, scholarship has different levels. Likewise, the people of innovation have different levels. So you don't treat everyone on the same level. And not everyone is on the same level. So I hope that that uh, somewhat answers the question. For example, uh, I'll give you an example in America someone who I would say is a sheikh and he may not regard, you know, and he's a sheikh and especially in accordance to that society two people I'll name that are Salafi uh, Sheikh Tahir Wyatt okay and especially in accordance with his mujtama, his society you know, it doesn't mean I'm going to call Sheikh uh, Tahir for a fatwa or something like this, alhamdulillah I can go to you know, our ulama that have taught him but that doesn't negate his scholarship, and especially in the standard of his society. Likewise, Sheikh uh, Abdurrahman Omeysan, also well known for his knowledge, and and praised by uh, ulama, both of them. So, uh, it depends on the level of scholarship you're referring to, but we have to be cautious about negating. And likewise, there are so many people who are unknown to us, even, who are people who may be on the Sunnah, but they might be into a particular, especially a migrant community. For example, the Somalis and Ethiopians, you're probably not going to know a lot of their masajib. I'm talking about the American context. I know Somali sheikhs that are sheikhs that live in America, you know, and I wouldn't necessarily go to them for necessarily fatawa because I would go with those people I feel that have more knowledge and are you know that I have that I know more about but likewise I would still ask them questions or what have you or Egyptians that I know I know a, a sheikh who's in our locality in Seattle Sheikh Said 
who I, I ask him questions if I have some uh, issues because he's right there and he has knowledge. He's sitting on something very strong. But that doesn't mean he's on the level of so-and-so shit, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. So we have to be careful of negating scholarship. Uh, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct, so I said that was incorrect. So myself with the shaitan, wa sallam, wa sallam,